I start mainly drawing in the nightclubs and that helped, I think, for me to find the language to make the painting. Because originally when I started, the paintings were quite still, quite representational. And, um, and because there's, these spaces I go to the draw in um, Hackney in the 80s and 90s, they were very dark, music were loud, dub, blues music. Um, you couldn't actually see what you were doing. So I was making these drawings. I didn't actually know what they were called when I, I was doing them. I only found out years after they were called gesture drawings. And I was making them in the right situation. You didn't have to see what you were doing. You just had to feel and do it. So the nightclub was the ideal place to, um, to make these drawings. So they're called gesture drawings, movement, action, and expression of what you feel the, f the, f the, f the people are doing. Um, and you have to give everything over to the drawing in that three or four minutes, which is the length of a record. And you do probably, I don't know, 40, 50 a night, about 10, 15 will work, capture that energy, movement, and action of that moment in time. And so I'll take them back next day, I'll get up, look at them for the first time, because I don't actually see them when I'm doing them, because it's, you know, it's dark and you're not seeing what you're doing. Um, and I wouldn't want to see them anyway. I just want to get on to the other one. So I'll look at them next day and choose about four or five to work from to make the painting. And I'll stick them beside the painting. Now, after, after working like that for a while, you begin to realize the, the, the language you're using in the drawing should sort of be more related in the painting. So they stop getting static and more representational and starting to have lots of movement and action. So I'll start breaking the figures up, lots of marks to evoke, um, well, evoke sound, basically. Um, and so the whole surface become a bit more shattered. My beginning with music was mainly carnival in the West Indies, and I came to London when I was 11. My, my mom always buy me the latest Bob Marley. It kept me sweet, kept me going, you know. You know I was young, and, you know, so you know, music was important. Plus, um, the West Indian community in those days, they didn't go to nightclubs. And because they're all from the, those islands, they used to have little parties probably every three or four weeks in their house, in the front room with the old gramophone. And I used to play, I used to be the DJ for my mom's parties, but I didn't know I was being the DJ then. You know, you have your little 45s and stuff. So I got to really like reggae and I have a good feel for it because that's the music. I mean, they used to call it rock steadies in those days, rock steady parties, drinking long life beer and stuff like that. And as I grew up and went to art school, um, of course, a lot of young people start creating their own sounds. And then they started having bigger house parties and parties outside of the house. So basically, the, the first parties were mainly in old cinemas. When cinemas were closing down, they used to have um, nightclub parties in those. And the first one I went to was in um, uh, Seven Sisters. At a, um, it used to be a cinema there and they turned it into a nightclub. And I was so excited by the music, which was of course dub music then, because reggae was started by just, you know, the, the singing, the music and the singing. But once they start distorting the music in the studio, things like Lee Perry, uh, Lee, Lee Scratch Perry, started, um, you have feedbacks, you had quiet areas, you know, you, you had um, sometimes echoes and stuff like that. The music really started getting really exciting, particularly for the younger generation. You think, yes, that's what I want. That's what I want to in my painting. So the, the, the music was very helpful to me when I look at how people got excited when they danced to it. In the beginning, I just, I just painted, my painting was mainly to do with dub music. But after four or five years of doing it, I went to Italy for two years. 
Going to Italy was a big change because suddenly the light was so amazing, you know, the, the color and the light. And I started using brighter, lighter colors, but I didn't know I was doing it. I thought I was using the same palette like I did in London. Um, and I, my first painting I did in Italy was called Carnival Dub. I didn't call it Carnival Dub then, but that's what I named it after. And this painting was an outdoor painting. So it's basically massive painting, about five meters square, um, four big speakers on each corner of the canvas and figures towards one side and figures looking from an aerial view. But that painting incorporate not only dub music, but carnival as well. Because carnival has always been, been in my bones from, the, from Grenada, but I never actually echo it or brought it out, not until I went to Italy, because of the light and the atmosphere. And being in a place like that, the energy you get is slightly different as, because in London I was surrounded by the drum and bass, the, the dub. There was no way to go. And going to Italy, you could, you could, see, you could see it from a bigger expanse. Um, so you could see yourself more objectively and try and be more selective. So I was integrating the two different things, the carnival and the dub, because most, the majority of people in, in the West Indies come from very small islands, and most of the islands play carnival music, which is what Notting Hill Carnival was about. But all the islands have their own unique things, um, and, and echoing some of those things in the painting, I think, makes the whole thing a richer tapestry when you're painting. Yeah. Um, it's interesting looking at, looking, at the, looking at the new things that I'm doing and the things I did, say, back in the late 70s, which is essential. Because it, it just shows the language. I think the language is quite similar. Probably language, the early language, a bit more cruder, harsher, more raw, probably. And the nice thing about seeing, seeing it now in relationship to what I'm doing, it tells me like I have to be a bit more, um, a bit more physical again, a bit raw again with, when I put colors and ships and stuff on. But you, your life changes, you change. I'm, I'm, I'm what, 64 now. I mean, I got stuff I did probably when I was about 20 at Central. And when you're a youth, I remember it's, that's like a youth basically, your energy and stuff like that is totally different when you're, when you're 64. But, but I think it's, it's exciting. Itching and scratching, the painting I've done recently. Um, I did that painting because I went to Jamaica and did all those drawings in the nightclubs. And that painting, I'm very excited about it because I'm going, it's very similar to Dubstro in terms of the orchestration, the marks and stuff, but it's even more frenetic and more broken up. And it's kind of softer, but when you start looking at it, the colors are throbbing a lot than say Dubstro. Dubstro has a lot darker, heavier notes, but the, the color notes in, um, in itching and scratching, they're not as heavy, but once you, it pulls you in and spreads out, and I think that's to do with Cornwall, the light in Cornwall. And so it's a very, you're affected by nature, the place you are surrounded by. So I might think I'm going to be a bit, a little bit probably cruder, a little bit more brutal probably again. But you get back to who you are now and the space and surroundings. <laughs> it, so, yeah, that determines a lot, even though you might, but it's good wanting to do it because it's saying something like, yeah, I need to do something a little bit rougher in the paintings, or probably a bit more break, break the edges up and stuff like that. And that again, you see, that's to do with drawing a lot. Drawing frees you. Drawing frees you to express yourself more in the painting. Because the more you draw, the more when you come to painting, it's easier to do. You don't have to think so much all the bloody time. You could just act upon the, your emotions and feelings because you have done it through the drawing as well.